killer stalking young women. Everybody knew he was out there. He was watching and had already picked out his next victim. There's a lot of panic in the area here. And police can't seem to track him down. There was a sense of urgency. Can a psychic help even the playing field? I could see him clearly, and I could walk up and tap him on the shoulder. It was that clear. One, what is your emergency? My neighbor is missing. Her, her house is covered in blood. Please hurry. Okay, we're sending someone out there now. We received a call from a female reporting that a violent attack had occurred at her neighbor's house. 28-year-old Randy Me Brewer's home is a disturbing scene. Hey, Johnny, what we got? Uh, Lieutenant, basically what we have is what appeared to be blood. It appeared that the body has been taken away from the scene. I saw no force entry. So, you know, it kind of told me that she knew who her attacker was or, you know, that attacker might have caught her off guard. OK. Blood trails is leading from the bedroom throughout the door into the carport area. There's a lot of blood. But no body. I want to show you her bedroom. There's some things in there you might want to see. We proceeded into the bedroom where some type of uh, struggle or sexual assault had occurred on the bed. It appeared that the body was taken from the scene. Drug from this bedroom down the hall here, out of the door in the back. With such a large amount of blood at the scene, every second is critical if they are going to find Randy Me Brewer alive. We brought in dogs and helicopters, searched all in the wooded area behind Randy and Brewer's residence, looking for evidence or any clues of her disappearance. Police begin interviewing neighbors. We had an incident over here the other night, a murder, and I don't know if you heard anything out here. But no one saw or heard anything. She was well liked. Uh, she's a very outgoing, happy person, and they could not tell us of any enemies that she had. Investigators begin their search for Me Brewer or her killer by questioning her family and friends. We interviewed several of her co workers. Where were you at that night, sir? Including friends, boyfriends. You're not a suspect, but uh, we'd like to get your statement. Ex boyfriends. What time did you leave from there? Also, family members. Who was at home with you that can uh, corroborate that story? But investigators are unable to turn up a single lead. We still had no random Me Brewer, and we really didn't know what happened to her at the time. Because of the blood found at her home, investigators suspect Me Brewer has been murdered. But unless they find her body, they will never be able to prove it. But everything changes when two other women turn up dead in nearby Baton Rouge. Murray Pace was brutally murdered in her home. And then later on, we had another murder in Bob and Gina Wilson Green, who was a nurse who was also brutally murdered in her home. And DNA found at the crime scenes linked the victims to one killer. We realized that we had a serial killer on hands. What started out as a routine investigation is actually one piece of a terrifying puzzle. Most of these ladies were single, uh, single mothers. They lived in kind of upscale neighborhoods. They all had good jobs. Terror grips Baton Rouge, and no woman feels safe from the serial killer. He struck during the night, he struck during the day, he struck on rainy days, he struck on weekends. I mean, you never knew when this uh, suspect was on strike. We didn't know if one of our families was going to be the next victim, or a next door neighbor might be the next victim. While police search for a killer, the victim's families must deal with the loss. Ann Pace's daughter, Murray Pace, was one of the victims. This experience was so shocking because it was so outside um, anything that had been part of my life prior to the moment of Murray's death. And I felt desperate to know what had happened. Pace begins a personal quest for answers. I was able to contact Ann Williams, who was 
at that time teaching a forensics class. Pace hopes forensic consultant Ann Williams' forensic expertise can help find her daughter's killer. When I found out about these cases, I was naturally very interested, especially when I learned that they didn't really have a clue who was doing this. Initially, I was interested in what does this guy look like? Anything, any kind of information to help us catch him and stop the killings. So that might include what kind of work he does, what kind of vehicle he drives, what does he look like? And Ann Williams knows just the woman who can provide her with these answers. Psychic Jeannie Borgen. I had worked with Jeannie Borgen in the past on several murder cases and really grown to trust her opinion. Thank you. When I start um, on a case, I only ask three questions. I ask for their name as it is on their birth certificate because that's personal. It's Charlotte Murray Pace. Okay. And she went by Murray. Their birth date. June 28, 1979. And if it's a missing person, where is the last place that the person was seen at? She was murdered in Baton Rouge, May 31st. All right, that's all I need right now. Okay. So, and then I generally go to that place, bring the victim in, and then I start tracking them. I have notes now, and then I, I see through his eyes. I feel his feelings. She's seen him in the neighborhood. He's familiar to her. She's, he wants to come in. His face, his face, no. The psychic says she can see the serial killer's face. Can she? Desperate to stop a serial killer before he strikes again, psychic Jeannie Borgen tries to connect with one of the victims, Murray Pace. Since you have pictures here, I, I'm going to work on this picture because it seems to have more energy in it for some reason than the other two. The picture flashed, and I saw him standing across from Murray's house. There he was, right in front of him. I didn't have his name or a birth date. I just was picking him up and just proceeding from there. I see his face. He's about six feet tall, black. He sees his next victim. He's stalking her. She has dark hair. She's very attractive. I see the house. There are two trees. I see something. It's whiskey something. Whiskey. Whiskey. We have to stop him. Whiskey. I can see him. It looks to me like he's already stalking his next victim. Well, who is this woman? Do you see her? She's very pretty. She's tall, she's got dark hair. With a psychic's terrifying vision of another victim, Ann Williams notifies police. We knew a potential victim was a tall brunette. I mean, you're talking about 10,000 women over there, probably. You feel like you're looking for a needle in a haystack. You know, how are we going to find her? But before there is even time to look, the Baton Rouge serial killer strikes again. Carrie Lynn Yoder becomes his next victim. The victim was, as Jeannie had described, she was an attractive, tall brunette in her mid-20s. And there's one more eerie detail from Borgen's vision. Her body was found floating in Whiskey Bay. Whiskey. Whiskey. Just like the psychic's vision. I mean, I was just astonished. It was, it, was, um, it was beyond coincidental. There's no question about that. That's when I knew she was right on. As fear reaches a new level, investigators come together to form a task force. And any information on the serial killer 
makes front page news. One of the things that everybody was waiting for from this task force was the behavioral profile. Police hoped that the profile would uh, give people a psychological face to the killer. Soon, a profile of the killer emerges. The task force described the suspect as a white male, 25 to 35 years old, physically fit, probably someone who does physical labor for his job, and someone who was not a loner. But the psychic sees a different killer, a black man. There was never a doubt in my mind that I was seeing the right person because I was actually looking at the victim and I could identify her also. If I could identify the victim, I had to have the murderer. But with only a description and no name, police can't follow up on a psychic's clues. Investigators turned to the terrified community for help. They got together in like a place called the War Room and they began uh, receiving tips and calls uh, in reference to these murders. Hundreds of tips pour in. They were so busy they had to hire out an answering service to deal with the tips. Two separate tips about one man gets their attention. His name is Shannon Kohler. He's a match to the task force's profile and when police bring him in he refuses to cooperate. Is he trying to hide something? Investigators believe Shannon Kohler could be the Baton Rouge serial killer. To prove it, they'll need a DNA sample, but Kohler refuses to cooperate. So they filed uh, some paperwork in the court and uh, they forced him to uh, submit to a DNA swab. The people of Baton Rouge hold their breath waiting for the DNA results. But the results are a major blow. Mr. Colard was dismissed after they tested his DNA next to the uh, DNA found at the uh, crime scene. Kohler is not the Baton Rouge serial killer. The real killer is still out there. We felt like this individual was going to strike again with another a wave of violence. With lives at stake, Ann Williams contacts police again to try to offer help. Lieutenant David McDavid. I, I don't know how you feel about this, but... Uh, she urges investigators to contact the psychic. Okay. And she's been describing a serial killer as a black man. I've never really dealt with psychics. You, know, you never know. Uh, if, if God gave this person this gift, they could be sentenced to the right location to find her body. Willing to do anything, McDavid agrees to meet with psychic Hello. Jeannie Borgen. I'm David McDavid from Psychic Police Department. You ready to go? Sure, thank you. McDavid takes Borgen to Whiskey Bay. This is where two of the bodies were found, right here. Uh... If I go to a place, it comes in sharper, and it's much more concentrated. Seems to be very comfortable with this place. The bodies in that were found over there in that area. Let me see. Everything radiates to energy. And energy tells you a lot. No. He wants to know victims. He watches, peeks windows. He knows them. Somebody saw him. Witness there. Witness. He moves in. I see his face. Black. Face brown. Mustache. Mustache. Black. Witness saw. Witness. He's definitely not white, he's black. And he actually looks through windows and watches them. So you think maybe he's a peeping Tom? Oh, yeah. Does he have a history of peeping Tom, possibly, or stalking? Oh, he, he, um, he, he stalks, and he started peeping in windows when he was a child. Probably as young as, um, like, six or seven, just real young. 
When I was down there, I felt that there is a witness. There may be more than one witness. You're going to have to hurry because he's going to strike again. With no time to waste, investigators split up in order to follow up on the psychic's leads. McDavid scours through arrest records looking for anyone with a history as a peeping Tom, while Ann Williams hits the streets looking for witnesses. After questioning several of Murray Pace's neighbors, Williams finds a witness who saw a suspicious man the day Pace was murdered. She described a black man, his height, his weight, his age, blue work pants, the scraggly goatee, the fact that he was in the neighborhood staring and stalking Murray. I mean, I was just really flabbergasted. We'll start with the eyes and try to get a reasonable likeness of this guy. Williams takes the witness's description and develops a composite with the use of special face recognition software. You see me here? He's smaller. Oh, yeah, that looks together. That looks a lot like him. Do detectives okay. finally have the killer in their sights? Well, thanks so much. When Ann Williams know. sends Lieutenant McDavid the composite, he's astonished. He knows this man. When I looked at the sketch, almost immediately, it made me think of Derek Toddley. Derek Toddley was a peeping Tom. He had been arrested several times, dating back to 1992 in the Zachary area. Derek Todd Lee is a convicted peeping Tom, but that's a far cry from a serial killer. Could the psychic be wrong? In the search for a serial killer, Lieutenant McDavid matches a witness's composite to the face of a convicted peeping Tom, Derek Todd Lee. Derek Todd Lee had a very long rap sheet. Uh, we had dealt with him since 1992 in the Zachary area. But there's one more chilling detail. He committed a burglary across the street from the neighborhood where these two previous murders happened. Derek Todd Lee seems like the perfect suspect, but the task force is looking for a white man. Derek Todd Lee didn't match the profile the police were publicizing of the white male, but he definitely matched the description given by Jeannie Borgen. McDavid believes Lee could be the Baton Rouge serial killer, and he matches the psychic's description. He decides to move forward with his hunch. This one with these two murders, we have a suspect, uh, black male, six foot, with a small goatee. Has been in this area stalking before since uh, 1992. We began to put a timeline together as to where he was at at each time of these murders. We observed that every time that one of these murders happened, that Derek Todd Lee was out of jail. With this information, McDavid is able to obtain a subpoena for Lee's DNA. We didn't want him to uh, either run or refuse or have a big court battle to get his DNA. We want to go ahead and get it the right way and get it down to the crime lab. Thank you very much. You have a good day. We went to his house and confronted him with the uh, DNA uh, court order to get his DNA swab. Lee's DNA is taken to the crime lab. Will the psychic's vision prove to be right? When the results came back, we learned that Derek Todd Lee was the Baton Rouge serial killer. With the capture of Derek Todd Lee, the Baton Rouge serial killer's reign of terror is over. And now he was off the street, and that was probably one of the greatest days of my life. I was at a friend's house, and her husband called and said, look, and there on the television was a picture of the serial killer. They caught him. Derek Todd Lee was convicted of the brutal murder of Murray Pace, and he's awaiting execution. In addition to Murray Pace and Randy Me Brewer, Lee's DNA is linked to five other murders of young women. The body of Randy Me Brewer was never found. Jeannie identified early on the race of Derek Lee. I have no explanation for um, 
how she was able to do that. Uh, but she did. Without Jeannie's participation, I think we would have been chasing our tails. I wouldn't have known he was a black man. I certainly wouldn't have found the witnesses. Ann Williams really went the extra mile, and the Zachary Police Department did some really good police work. It was working together that really helped solve this case. I've never really dealt with psychics on a day-to-day -day basis. I mean, my feelings is if, if the good Lord gives you that power, I think that you should use it and assist law enforcement in every way.